सो वेलकम फ्रेंड चैप्टर नंबर थर्टीन दैट इज फेरस मेटल्स एंड इन दैट दीज आर दी सम टॉपिक्स विच विल कवर इन अवर डिस्कशन इन अवर डिस्कशन एंड दैट इज पीग आयरन आयरन कास्ट आयरन रोट आयरन सो डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ दी अवर आयरन uh now as you know that uh, we are aggressively use the uh, uh, different type of the irons in the construction uh, in the uh, cast iron we use the wrought iron even we use the steel and these are the coal as the ferrous material uh, or the ferrous metals uh, because the constituent of these uh, uh, items uh, that is a cast iron it is also contain the iron it is also steel is also contain the iron so as a whole it is called as the ferrous metal it is called as the ferrous metal now uh, the different type of the structure uh, we are not going into the, the big detail of this uh, structure we have the alpha and beta and delta and gamma iron and uh, that depends upon its uh, type of uh, magne uh, magnetic uh, properties and uh, how much carbon that can dissolve and its brittleness and its ductility uh, that is uh, incorporated in this alpha uh, beta delta and gamma type of irons so uh, we directly jump to the iron so iron is uh, uh, acquired from this ores right iron ores and uh, these are the different iron ores fe uh, 304 fe 203 and 2Fe3O3 twice H2O and then FeS3 and FeCO3. So the relative uh, iron content, if we take this Fe2O3, then it contains 70 to 75 percent of the iron, and for the least, it has the FeCO3, it has a only a 40 percent of iron content. So uh, the fundamental uh, chemical property uh, in the extraction of iron from the ore is very simple and uh, heating heating of the ores in a presence of reducing the agent will result into the formation of the carbon in the formation of the carbon in the formation of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Uh, iron um, that triplet as a gas and metallic iron iron owes its great utility to fact that it alloys freely with other element and its inherent properties are markedly altered and improved for the wearing the condition now here uh, the pig iron right so the for the uh, pig iron uh, let me uh, just see that uh, how uh, we will uh, uh, have the pig iron. So here uh, we have uh, manufacturing of pig iron that is called the blast furnace, blast furnace for the manufacturing of the pig iron. So this is how we can uh, have uh, that uh, uh, the um, calcined ore is uh, smelted in the blast furnace, right? So here from here we will add the charge right and at that uh, particular uh, opening it the uh, temperature is uh, 400 degree centigrade then it at the next stage it is 600 degree centigrade at the slagged form it is 800 to 1000 degree centigrade and iron melt at 1200 to 1300 degree centigrade and at the bottom it has the temperature of 1500 degree centigrade uh, and uh, here uh, the air is blowed inside this particular uh, furnace and the gases will come out from this end right whatever the gas that will hot burn gas will come out from this end and when the metal is, is uh, melt at that metal will be collected collected the slag is collected here and slag will be come out from this and the metal will be come out from the iron metal will be come out from this outlet so this is the 
typical uh, type of the uh, blast furnace for the having the pig iron manufacturing uh, now let me see what is the procedure the iron ore is dressed by the crushing it to about 50 mm cube the impurities are knocked off and ore is then calcined calcined to drive off the moisture the calcined ore is melted in a furnace that is shown in this figure and the iron is deoxidized and a part of the sulfur is also removed the limestone yes the limestone which act as a flux right it act as a flux now what is the flux that is written over here flux is a mineral substance charged into the blast furnace to lower the melting point see uh, when you use this calcine that is a limestone when you use the limestone that will pull down the uh, the temperature right at which uh, the ore is melted so it decreased the melting point and that is what called as the flux material and is added as a final remove the sulfur the molten metal is trapped from the furnace and is cast in the form of pigs right and that is why it is called as the pig iron now classification uh, pig iron is classified as a Bessemer pig then foundry pig then forge pig and molted pig so uh, let me um, see the Bessemer pig derives its name because of its use in the furnace of steel by Bessemer process using the hematite ore right so hematite ore is used in the Bessemer pig right and impurities such as sulfur, phosphorus, and copper are not desirable in the Bessemer pig. So, uh, boundary pig is also known as the gray pig, right? Gray pig, the other name is gray pig, and contains sufficient quantity of free carbon and is produced when the furnace is provided with the sufficient fuel. And when fuel provides is sufficient insufficient and if sufficient sulfur is present in the ore forge pig is produced right so if you have the insufficient fuel and the sufficient sulfur is present then it is called as the forge pig uh, and foundry pig it is the sufficient quantity of free carbon and this is also known as the white pig and molted pig is in between the gray pig so it is between the gray pig and white variety and then exhibited the molted fracture now composition of the pig iron uh, it contains a three to four percent carbon then so 0 0.5 to 3.5 percent silicon 0 0.5 to 2 percent manganese and 0 0.02 percent to 1 percent sulfur and 0 0.0 one 0.03% to 1% that is a phosphorus now what is the property pig iron see it is very hard and it is brittle with the fusion of temperature 1200 degrees centigrade and melt easily these are the properties and it can be hardened but cannot be tempered and magnetized if you temper it will broke and you cannot do the magnetization of the pig iron and the compressive strength is high but it weak in the tension and shear remember it is very weak in tension and shear pig iron does not rust yes this is a very good property it does not rust and cannot be reweighted or welded so you cannot do the welding and reweighting now where we will use this type of the material so more suitable for the columns base plate and door Brackets. These are the place where it is a suitable one. Now another one that is this is up to the this it is a pig iron. So we discuss the pig iron. Now we will start the cast iron. Now cast iron is uh, manufactured using the cupola furnace, right? Cupola furnace. So pig iron is remelted. See, so from the pig iron we if you reprocess it, then it will get something. So Pig iron is remelted with the limestone and coke 
and redefine in cupola furnace see cupola furnace so it is manufactured in the cupola you can produce this cast iron in the cupola furnace it is then poured into the molds of desired size and shape the product is known as the cast iron contain about 2 to 4 percent carbon in two forms that is as a compound cementite and in a state of the chemical combination and as a free carbon in a state of the mechanical mixture carbon in the first form called the combined carbon because it is combined right it is chemically combined and graphite in the latter form so in mechanical mixture we use this the graphite the quality of cast iron thus depends upon the state in which carbon exists so uh, the property of cast iron is directly related to the uh, this carbon exist how the carbon is exist in the cast iron the word cast iron is a mesonomer as a steel with the carbon contained less than two percent can be cast the striking difference between a steel and cast iron is that the forms or is plastic and forgeable while the latter is not right and the however some of the modern cast iron develop a fair degree of plasticity and toughness now method of casting then sand casting uh, so we can uh, use that uh, material melt and matter into casting right uh, and that is the hollow casting then vertical sand casting then centrifugal casting then die casting uh, so these are the uh, some form of the casting so casting means it is something that uh, uh, you have uh, some uh, port or a mold in uh, which you have the inlet and you just pour this uh, material and you will get the mold it is something like that you are molding the statue right you are molding a statue uh, the, with the melted so hollow casting is there vertical sand casting is centrifugal casting and the die casting is there now classification of the cast iron classify the gray as we already white malleable molded chill and toughened and is described in table number 13.1 now properties of this cast iron uh, cast iron is hard and the brittle it can neither be reweighted or you cannot do the reweighting or the welding strong in the compression it has a good compression strength of the 600 newton per mm square and it is very much weak in the tension and shear specific gravity is 7.5 then uh, melting point is 1200 it cannot be magnetized or it's suitable for the forging and is not suitable for the forging right it is not suitable for forging and iron contain a large amount of manganese and chromium are likely to be permanently white uh, while those having the high silicon content are gray and proper adjustment in the composition the cast iron may be rendered white by cooling rapidly or gray by cooling slowly from the molten state effect of impurities uh, yes uh, what will be the effect on the uh, on of the on the cast iron and that is a carbon is a one of the impurity uh, so proportion of carbon and its form more or less influence most of the physical and mechanical property of the cast iron and temperature of the cast iron is reduced as the carbon content or the percentage of the combined combined carbon is increased consequently white cast iron has a lower melting point than the gray cast iron shrinkage varies uh, inversely as the carbon content now uh, classification of the cast iron so you have to uh, just self study this thing the gray white so here type of the cast iron and its uh, respective property and its composition and the uh, usage right that is given so the usage uh, uh, is uh, somewhere here this is misplaced usage and this is what the content so if we take the example of the gray uh, cast iron so what is the property obtained from the foundry pig good machinability low melting point that is 1200 degree centigrade rusts 
easily in the air this is the one thing and rapidly act upon by acid and gray in color so it uh, rapidly act with the acid this is the drawback and some similarly rust easily in the air this is the drawback uh, so uh, these are the properties um, of this gray cast iron and what is the composition chemical composition carbon is up to 2.5 to 3.7 percent silicon is 1 to 2 percent manganese 0 0.4 to 1 percent sulfur is 0 0.06 percent to 0 0.12 percent and phosphorus is 0 0.1 to 1 percent where we will use we use in the pipe fittings then locomotive wheels right so your locomotive wheels is made up with this gray cast iron and machine bears these are the property similarly you refer this white uh, malleable then uh, molded steel and the tough cast iron now the silicone phosphorus uh, uh, then uh, uh, manganese uh, these are the impurities uh, as we seen that the carbon here we said not not, not having the much uh, effect uh, but if you take the silicone a small presence of silicon increase the fluidity of the melton iron and decrease the blow holes and increase the density of the cast iron so if you have this silicon then that a percent of this 0 to 0 0.5 to 3 percent then it will increase the fluidity and when it is melted and decrease the blow holes and increase the density of the cast iron and reduce the solubility of the carbon in the iron and a shrinkage while when silicon is this increased up to six percent iron becomes a hard and has a mirror like fracture right so if we have the silicon more than six percent then it will be hard and mirror like the fracture if you have up to 0 0.5 to 2 three percent then it will give good fluidity and similarly you have to see the sulfur then phosphorus and manganese now what is the use this is the main thing that we have to consider you must know that what is the use of each and every material and it the basic properties on account of the cheapness strength is with the with which it may be melted and cast into more or less intricate shapes ease of machining high damping capacity and ease with the which it hardness may be varied the cast iron is most used of the cast metal employed in the engineering construction it is very much important some of of the more common usage of cast iron making the common uh, ornamental casting uh, such as the break, wall bracket lamp post bathroom fitting such as system water pipe sewer pipe manhole cover sanitary fitting rail chair carriage wheel machine parts subjected to the soak and its use in the basic material manufacturing wrought iron in the mild steel now there are some of the defects right uh, uh, on in the cast iron uh, that is a uh, segregation blow holes then uh, coarse grain originate during the cooling of that particular casting uh, iron with the high sulfur content are liable having a small crack see small if you have the high sulfur then small cracks transverse to the longitudinal axis and called as the checks due to greater shrinkage and the lack of strength segregation is uh, pronounced in the high phosphorus iron if you have the high phosphorus content then there will be a segregation carbon and silicon can sometimes segregate in a such manner that interior portions of the metal are white and interior parts are gray rendering it difficult to machine the casting then blow holes caused due to the improper venting of the mold or due to the high proportion of the sulfur right so these are the some defects which is uh, in the then spongy spots uh, that exaggerate from the 
open grains right then cold suns uh, false planes uh, are the some of the uh, defects in the cast iron now we go to the wrought iron so puddling furnace puddling furnace is used for the manufacturing of the our wrought iron right for our wrought iron so this is the typical layout of this uh, particular uh, uh, puddling furnace right now wrought iron considered to be a pure iron see it is a pure iron is produced by removing the impurity from the cast iron so cast iron we process we remove the impurity from the cast iron that will become the wrought iron total impurities are limited to 0.5 percent with the maximum percentage of carbon of 0.15 silicon is 0.15 to 0.2 percent phosphorus is 0.12 to 0.16 percent sulfur is 0.02 percent to 0.3 percent manganese is 0.03 percent to 0.1 percent it is manufactured in the reverberatory or the puddling furnace reverberatory uh, rotary and puddling furnace by the esters process and melton iron uh, first refined by the blasting air in the furnace the metal is cooled and poured into the molds and the metal become brittle it is then melted in a reverberatory furnace where iron melts due to the burning of the gas after melting Puddle bowls are produced, which are sent for the singling, right? That is sent for the singling, and this is how it is work. Uh, we are not with bother about the processing part. We are bother about the property part because the subject is related to the building material. We must know the properties. So, wrought iron is ductile, malleable, tough, moderately elastic. And ultimate crushing strength is 200 Newton per mm square. And ultimate tensile strength is 0. Point, sorry, 40 Newton per mm square. Transverse to the direction of the rolling, the tensile strength range from 60 to 80 percent of its strength parallel to its of its direction. The mold. Modulus of elasticity of wrought iron is 1.8 into 10 raised to, raised to uh, 5 Newton per mm square. Uh, the melting point is uh, 1500 degree centigrade, specific gravity 7.8, uh, can be forged and we can do the welding. Wrought iron is effectively a resist corrosion. Yes, this is the good uh, property. It has a effectively resist the corrosion. It is tough and withstand the shocks and can neither be hardened or not tempered. At 900 degree center, wrought iron becomes soft and that its two pieces can be joined by hammering. Alloying elements uh, um, used in the wrought iron, including the nickel, copper, Melabidam and addition of the nickel from uh, 1 to 1.5 to 3 uh, percent produce the substantial increase in the elastic limit and tensile strength. So, see if you add this nickel, this is the very good thing. If you increase the nickel in the wrought iron by 1.5 to 3.5 percent. You have the good elastic limit and the tensile strength. So, you can increase the tensile strength. Nickel is also beneficial in preventing the reduction of the impact strength as sub-zero temperature. And copper may be added to increase the corrosion resistance property. So, if you add the copper, then it will give you the good corrosion resistance. Where we will use? Yes, this is the very important roof covering rivets chain ornamental iron work such as uh, gates and etc etc ornamental works uh, are the some uh, casting kind of the thing we are using uh, in the aesthetic view now the defects uh, that 
it also uh, required harmful effect of sulfur as uh, everywhere the sulfur and phosphorus has the harmful effects uh, appears to be less pronounced in the wrought iron and in the steel become less op uh, opportunity for segregation in the puddling process uh, furthermore as uh, much of the impurities in the wrought iron are affiliated with the slag rather than the iron however very high sulfur content see 0 0.3 to 5 0 0.5 percent is likely to cause the wrought iron to crumble and exhibit the red shortness shortness and in forging or the welding uh, then we go to the steel you just uh, read all these documents right of the defects now we go to the steel uh, and the steel is the most suitable building material as all you know this is due to a wide range of combination of physical and mechanical properties can have so uh, type of steel that is a dead mild steel mild steel medium carbon steel high carbon steel or the hard steel so uh, that is hard that is the type of the carbon and uh, steel and it is the carbon content so uh, if you pick up this uh, medium carbon steel that it contains 0.3 to 0.8 percent of the carbon now manufacturing method so uh, basement process then cementation process crucible process open hearth process electric smelting process duplex process and leans and dona weeds that is uh, SWAT form is LD process. So this is how you can have the manufacturing of the uh, steel. So here basement process as uh, we add the air from here and uh, we will get that particular material from this end. Uh, then properties of the uh, different steel that is a mild steel then high carbon steel and high tensile steel. Uh, so uh, mild steel we mostly it is a ductile malleable uh, tougher um, tougher than more elastic than the wrought iron mild steel can be used forging and welding difficult to tempered and harden it rust quickly yes this is the thing it is rust quickly and can be permanently magnetized the properties are that particular 7.3 that is a specific gravity ultimate compressive strength and tensile strength is 800 and 1200 newton per mm square to 600 to 800 newton per mm square and used in the roll section reinforcement bar roof covering seat piles railway tracks many more things that is made up with the mild steel high carbon steel uh, high carbon steel has the variation that is known that carbon content 0.15 percent to 1.5 percent and uh, it is uh, tougher and more elastic than the mild steel more elastic than the mild steel it can be forged weld uh, with uh, weld with the difficulties yes forge and weld with the difficulties ultimate compressive and tensile strength is that is 1350 newton per mm square and the tensile strength is so high it is 1400 to 2000 newton per mm square and respective gravity is 3.9 percent and using reinforcement cement concrete rcc even in the pre-stress concrete we are using the high carbon steel it takes the socks and vibrations and use making tool and machine parts high tensile steel uh, the carbon content is 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 percent manganese contains 0 0.6 percent silicon 0 0.2 percent sulfur is 0 0.05 percent and phosphorus is 0 0.05 percent it is also known as the high strength steel right and uh, um, the ultimate tensile strength is about 2000 newton per mm square and the minimum elongation is 10 percent high tensile steel used in the pre-stress concrete right so uh, properties of steel that is the uh, the factor influence the property of steel that is chemical composition heat treatment and mechanical work so that depends upon the chemical composition of the steel
and the effects now heat treatment i think that is covered up in the um, your workshop or even uh, we just uh, take out that what are the uh, principal purpose heat treatment are as follow to enhance the property of strain ductility and uh, hardness and toughness relieve internal stresses and strain to refine the grain remove gas normalize the steel after heating treatment so if you give the heating and cooling of this uh, particular uh, steel it will change the properties of a steel and that is what called as the heat treatment that is what called as the heat treatment then hardening the heat treatment consists of heating the steel above the upper critical temperature holding at the temperature until phase equilibrium has been established and then switching rapidly to the produce the martin site structure right so uh, by having uh, this uh, uh, heat treatment you can harden the steel material and the tempering the plain carbon steel has been hardened in is in meta stable condition and helium if this hardened steel is reheated to some temperature below the critical range a more stable condition will be obtained and this hardened steel do not easily have a combination of property desired for specific use modification is affected by the tempering then annealing annealing is again the process normalizing then mechanical work now the rolled uh, steel section uh, so see generally we have this type of the section available in the market available in the market that is called as the rolled steel section uh, that is i section roll i section then steel channel section this is channel section that is a t section this one is a t section then l section right or the angle section uh, then uh, tube section right then solid bars that is circular and square and flat plates so these are the some uh, uh, section which is uh, manufactured in the uh, industry under the roll mill right and uh, that is mostly used in the structural steel reinforcement steel bars yes in the rcc we are using the different types of the reinforced bars right the reinforced bar so the type mild steel grade mild steel grade 2 medium tensile high strength bar and tmt right tmt so tmt means thermomechanically treated thermomechanically treated it is most favorite and most uh, famous uh, material in the rcc so here the diameter of bar is given and the yield strength uh, is given and minimum elongation is given so if you look at the high strength deform bar the all size of bar is available diameter in this respect all you can get the 8 mm bar you have the 10 mm bar 15 so all size is available and yield strength is uh, varying from 1 4 5 500 and 550 you have the three grade of this uh, high strength deform bar is available 415 500 and 515 newton per mm and the respective elongation is also given. elongation that means if you have the steel bar and if you apply the tensile force on the both the end then there will be a increase in the length increase in the length that is delta l so that increase is called as the elongation so see here it finds is only a six percent so that is mostly used in the rcc structure right this is a high yield strength deform bar so deform means see these are the twisting is done right twisting is done why it is been provided because when you put this bar when you put this bar inside the concrete inside the concrete then that concrete will hold this like you are holding like you are holding something in your hand right something in your hand something in your hand so uh, that will uh, uh, that will uh, increase 
that will uh, provide the good bonding between the concrete right uh, and that is what the deform bar is now saving steel using tmt bar um, if you have the tnt 15 percent uh, and then if you are using the plane so if you are using the tmt bar 415 instead of this plane bar you will save up to 14 percent right up to 14 percent if you are using 500 then you can you save up to 45 percent or 44 percent and 550 if you are using the tmt bar instead of this plain steel bar then you will have the saving of 47 percent now rusting and uh, corrosion uh, that uh, is a very critical thing in the uh, our uh, 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 steel material so fe2 fe is reacted with the o plus carbon and water it will become this fe hco3 twice i think uh, this is a well understood theory and it is covered in your secondary education how the corrosion is occurred so you have to self study this thing uh, because that is already covered in your secondary education now tensile testing of the steel see we are taking the steel in construction because of the tensile strength tensile strength of the steel it has a significant tensile strength and that is why we are using the steel into the construction industry so uh, here the how you could uh, do this uh, uh, diameter see here diameter uh, of the uh, dimension of the circular section test piece so that mostly we done in the utm machine uh, universal testing machine and which we will find out the tensile strength modulus of elasticity elongation there are so many thing that is uh, taken into i think the strength of material you know that what is a utm machine and all that thing so um, for having the test if you uh, have the cross section area that is for diameter is uh, 22.56 then gauge length will be 113 then parallel length will be 124 and minimum transit radius is 23.5 so these are the dimension for rectangular section test specimen and it is given in the table so see uh, here this is the specimen uh, that we uh, prepared and we applied the tensile force on the both the sides so this l is prescribed uh, that is the total uh, gauge length of the uh, specimen that this is for the rectangular and this is for the circular see this cross section is rectangular this cross section is circular and this is a specimen after the failure uh, it has such some contraction and there is decrease in the cross section and uh, so if you look at the strain and stress curve so it is something like that uh, initially it is a linear and, and the slope of this slope of this uh, linear uh, section is called as the modulus of elasticity and this peak is called as the yield strength so this is the portion where your material behave like a plastic so on x axis you have the strain on y axis you have the stress as you increase the tensile force there is increase in the stress and there is increase in the strain so we have the loop slow that stress is directly proportional to strain so that we have already discussed in the strength of material now alloy steels uh, so property of these are the different alloy steel which include stainless steel nickel steel nr steel uh, vanadium steel then tungsten steel manganese steel and uh, moly molybdenum steel and uh, the composition is also given uh, uh, for the different chromium is 60 percent in the stainless steel nickel is 3.5 percent in nickel steel like that and its property and use it so you must uh, know this whole uh, table you have to refer this table you read the alloy composition then you remember the property and its use 
so here we complete this uh, ferrous uh, uh, metal right ferrous metal and uh, this is the exercise uh, which you have to uh, read this question and write down the answer from the material even we have some uh, um, objective questions that is given here the what is the crudest form of the um, your um, um, iron right like that so uh, that you should have to solve right that you have to solve from here that is the pig iron so this is how you should have to solve these problems right and uh, here uh, we have the another chapter that is non ferrous metal and that we will uh, discuss in our further discussion